Oh, Dr. Grant. My dear Dr. Sattler, welcome to Slash Course. You remember the song. If you don't know Jurassic Park, you don't know shit. Since the earliest days of cinema, terrible lizards have thrilled and terrified moviegoers. But how is a squishy homo sapien expected to survive against the ferocity of a 50 foot feathered freak? Well, spare no expense, stock up on shaving cream and prepare to get your hands dirty because this is how to kill dinosaurs. Now we could just say a massive meteor, global climate change, or the slow evolution into birds are what ended the reign of the dinosaurs. But where is the fun in that? Besides, it's not exactly practical. After all, you can't just summon an asteroid out of the sky, unless you're in a JRPG, and evolution is an extremely slow process, usually. Monkey. But there are plenty of more immediate methods to making sure dinosaurs stay extinct. We'll get to the genetically engineered abominations of Jurassic Park in a little bit. But first, let's fight the dinos on their own terms with sticks and stones. Ray Harryhausen is one of the founding fathers of special effects. He studied under Willis O'Brien, the stop motion pioneer who created the creatures in the Lost World, and of course, King Kong, which features a legendary fight against a dinosaur that the ape annihilates by ripping its jaw open. A scene that was remade in slightly less impressive CGI for Peter Jackson's film. Harryhausen followed in his mentor's earth-shaking footsteps with One Million Years BC, a remake of a 1940s film that mostly relied on footage of real animals dolled up to look like dinosaurs, including a triceratops that was masterfully played by a pig in a rubber suit. This sure is a gory movie. Yeah, but that's one mighty cute pig. The bar was not set very high, but Harryhausen knocked it out of the park with his gorgeous animation, and that fight between a tribe of cavemen and an evil Allosaurus still looks pretty damn good today. What? Do you really believe someone moves these figures one frame at a time? I'm not a masochist. I use black magic to make them animate themselves. Now, nowadays we know that humans and dinosaurs never actually coexisted. Honestly, we knew it back then too. But who cares when you can watch a bunch of people with ridiculous tans scrap with a stop motion model? The creature chows down on a crunchy crow magnet or two, but the beast is battered by a barrage of sharpened wooden spears, one of which strikes a fatal blow. Now, if you want a slightly less scientifically inaccurate humans versus dino story, there are multiple examples of people either traveling through time or finding themselves trapped in a hidden land where prehistoric creatures still rule the realm. Not scientifically possible! One of my favorites is Planet of the Dinosaurs, a spaghetti 70s sci-fi saga where a group of space explorers in stunning spandex jumpsuits crash land on a planet ruled by, well, you tell me. Their highly advanced laser rifles barely make a dent in the dino's hides. But when their future tech fails, the castaways kill their fair share of dinosaurs with bows and arrows, spears, and poison tip spikes. It's tough to beat the classics, but it's a pity the Planeteers didn't happen to have a nuke with them, because one surefire method to slaughtering stegos is radiation. Now, you'd think that prehistoric lizard plus plutonium would lead to a massive power upgrade. After all, that's Godzilla's origin, when blasts from nuclear bombs awaken and mutate the highly fictional Godzillasaurus. Gigantic dinosaurs attacking our boys! 
A dinosaur? What? Of course, the king of the monsters is really in a class all of his own. That's why we've already done an episode about him. He's kind of beyond a mere dinosaur at this point. And besides, the beast from 20,000 Fathoms beat him to the screen by a year anyway. This primordial kaiju classic hits a lot of the same beats as the big G. Ancient dinosaurs activated by nuclear testing, in this case the equally fictional Retosaurus, animated by, who else, Ray Harryhausen. This ferocious freak carves a swath the destruction across the eastern seaboard, and all attempts to stop it are met with disaster. Even when a bazooka blasts a hole in its throat, the beast's tainted blood poisons the populace, causing even more casualties. Something's funny. Most of the detail there. Well, they're out. In an iconic scene, our hero climbs aboard the cyclone and shoots a radioactive isotope into the gaping wound in the dinosaur's neck burning the creature from the inside out as Coney Island collapses around it. Now, Fathoms is far from the only example of a giant dino stomping a city, but if you got a more reasonably sized monster on your hands and you live near a construction site, you can definitely do a lot of damage with some heavy machinery. In the wake of Jurassic Park's record-shattering success, the resulting dinosaur renaissance spawned a stampede of schlocky imitators, from prehysteria to future war, Dinosaur Island to Tammy and the T-Rex. Even though that one's not technically a dinosaur, it's a robot dinosaur that has Denise Richards' dead ex-boyfriend's brain inside it. I will give you immortality! But the only one that even comes close, and I'm being extremely generous, is Roger Corman's Carnosaur. Now, unlike John Hammond, Dr. Jane Tiptree doesn't need any fancy amber to bring her dinosaurs back from extinction. She does just fine with plain old chickens. Have some chicken. It's good for you. And soon, she accidentally unleashes a Deinonychus onto an unsuspecting Nevada town. The perilous puppet feasts on its unsuspecting prey using its deadly claws and even deadlier, green camera filter. The creature eventually succumbs to the shotgun of a sheriff who doesn't take any shit. Oh, by the way, did I mention that this whole time, all of the women in town are being infected by a virus that makes them literally give birth to dinosaurs? Baby. And I'm not talking about laying eggs. I'm talking about living, breathing, squirming dinosaurs. Sorry, I guess I should have led with that. Turns out Dr. Tiptree is one of those, we need to destroy humanity for wrecking Earth and repopulate the planet with an army of dinosaurs types. So you're gonna give the Earth back to the dinosaurs? Well, you might say that. You know, just like your uncle on Facebook. And she unleashes a Tyrannosaurus just before she gives birth to a baby dino and dies. Now, the final showdown between the T-Rex and our hero culminates with the beast being disemboweled by a backhoe. I hate wildlife. <laughs> now, along with reusing the first film's puppets, the far superior sequel also shares a similar finale when the dinosaur is dumped down an elevator shaft with a forklift and blown back to the Stone Age with some TNT. Hit it! Look, no one's ever going to mistake Roger Corman for Steven Spielberg, but Carnosaur actually spawned a fairly respectable franchise, especially if you include the unofficial sci-fi sequels. But as fun as they are, you just can't beat the genuine article. So let's check in with our pals at InGen, where you can kill a dino with a cool Cretaceous kick. For such a mainstream, blockbuster, kid-friendly franchise, Jurassic Park has a pretty respectable body count. <laughs> You'll have to get used to Dr. Malcolm. The humans actually have a terrible track record when it comes to taking dinosaurs down. Most dinosaur deaths in the franchise are either natural disasters or natural selection. You know, these, di like, Play with toys on screen, 
or natural selection, while Homo sapiens are pretty much useless, probably because they're stuck using less than lethal methods like tasers and nets. Even in the original video games, your arsenal was pretty much limited to tranquilizer darts, and it kind of makes sense. After all, InGen spared no expense cloning these Mesozoic monstrosities. Each individual specimen must have cost John Hammond billions. So when humans are hunting dinos, their aim is to capture, not kill. But even when Muldoon busts out the big guns, his opponents outsmart him before he can fire a single shot. Clever girl. In fact, until Jurassic World, there's only one instance where a human directly causes a dinosaur's demise. Seriously, go back and watch the movies. Not a single dinosaur dies by a human's hand. The closest we get is when Tim traps that raptor in the freezer, where he's presumably rescued by the ghost of a Gallimimus off screen. The only confirmed kill comes from Malcolm's daughter Kelly in The Lost World, who uses the power of gymnastics to kick a raptor onto a bed of spikes. Things definitely changed after Jurassic World hit the scene, however, and now that we're in bloated CGI reboot town, a ton of dinosaurs meet their maker, courtesy of modern military tech. Those special forces guys shoot down a ton of pteranodons, and poor Charlie gets blown to squishy wet pieces by a precise shot from an RPG. Fallen Kingdom's dinosaurs are a little more bulletproof, but most of them are eliminated by an erupting volcano anyway. Even that brontosaurus that made so many people cry, but not me because they don't belong here. They already went extinct and they've killed thousands of people. Dinosaurs uh, uh, had their shot and nature selected them for extinction. That's my big problem with this movie, is how Bryce Dallas Howard's character passionately argues to rescue the dinosaurs. But personally, I was never really convinced that we should save these genetic monstrosities who have done nothing but murder untold hundreds. But if she ever changes her mind, we'll be happy to help them go extinct once more. Thanks for watching everyone and thanks for checking out the all new Slash course. What would you do if you ever had to deal with a dinosaur? How would you topple a Tyrannosaurus? How would you slaughter a Stegosaurus? Would you be victorious over a Velociraptor? Leave a comment, let us know, and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.